Today, let's get into Living After Midnight by Judas Priest. As always, if you like full tabs to every single section of the song you're trying to learn, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Here we go. The opening riff also is the chorus riff. And uh, as always, I watched some live footage to try to get this as close as possible for you. And by listening to the album and looking at live footage, you can hear that third of every chord in there. So they're not just doing strict power chords. It's not that. You can really hear that third in there sometimes. And uh, looking at live footage too, you can see they're kind of just mashing their third. And I saw KK Downing just doing his pinky one time. So they're not being too precise with if they're doing three or four. So feel free to hit the three or four. Don't forget that palm mute there. You don't have to be too exact with that either. Just kind of hit some open strings. Okay. Now the hardest part of this riff is probably getting all the syncopation. There's a lot of off beats. Okay, now that's the main riff and we get into even more syncopation in the verse riff when the verse kicks in. So we're accenting every single offbeat. Three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and... And now your pick stroke too here, I, I'm just doing all downs, but live I saw them alternating. Sometimes they're doing downs. Sometimes you can do this. Right? It's uh, totally up to you, whatever you feel comfortable with there. So that's de this is probably the trickiest part of the song, just getting that syncopation very accurate. And one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one. Okay, so just remember when you hit this, little quarter step bend to get that quarter step grind. And then just straight eighth note chugging. So that's basically the intro and the verse riff. And after the verse, we get to a pre-chorus section that goes like this. Okay, and then back into, into that main opening riff for the chorus. And now this pre-chorus, very simple, as you can see with the tab, it's just a G. And on the album, they might have layered up a full six string G power chord. You'd want to make sure to mute off that A string. But live, I only typically hear them do the power chord. And another thing that I hear them do live too is put an extra little strum in. Sometimes I'll hear this like. And it even sounds like they might be taking their first finger off and hitting an open E kind of uh, ghosting it. So you can experiment doing that too. And then going up to a B, D, and sliding in up to the chorus. Now that's pretty much it for the wrist for this song, except for one more bridge riff that comes in right before the solo. So it's a pretty easy riff and I'll just play it uh, and then we'll quickly discuss it and then get into the solo. Okay, I didn't play it for the proper rotations. That might get a little bit boring to sit there and play the whole thing. So I shortened it up. But uh, all that we're doing is we're starting on an A power chord. And then we're putting our second finger down on the third fret of the B string and our third finger down on the fourth fret of the D string. And that 
kind of is forming a what would be a D chord. So we're bouncing back and forth between a D and an A. And then exactly the same thing that was happening in the verse with this. And then that just repeats uh, three times. On the fourth repeat, we're going to do B, and then up to the uh, D, back to the B, and then into the chorus riff where the guitar solo starts. The solo isn't too hard, but there's just a couple of things, some bends that you'll have to get accurate and a couple of pinch harmonics in there. So we start by using our second finger to bend the 10th fret up to match B. So the solo gets a lot of its flavor by him alternating the notes that he's using on the D string. When we first start, we hit the D on the 12th fret, but then we also go uh, to the C sharp. Then a little half a step bend to match the G on the 12th fret. And then you have to get a couple of pinch harmonics in there. And that's accomplished by adding the flesh of your thumb to the pick attack. And different parts of the string will give you different harmonics. So you just kind of have to experiment along your string to find where those pinch harmonics are really going to pop out and really dig in and hit the string hard too to get them to pop. Okay. Now the second time we come up to bend with our second finger, we bend a half step and then a full step. So it's like... Now, to get that right, I just use my second finger to do a random slide, and then I skip over to my third finger, so I'm on the G string, and then use my third finger to bend. Grab that other note on the 22nd fret with your pinky, and then really vibrato it. You could even use the vibrato arm to do it like that if really getting it with your finger is problematic. Um, lots of times when I'm going for those really wide vibratos, I'll be, uh, mute off the other strings around it so that it sustains a little bit longer. So that's it guys, there's the whole song, all the rhythms and the solo as well. It's an awesome rock song, really gonna help your rhythm and your lead playing. Go rock out with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe and drop me some suggestions in the comments. I'll see you next time.